Our theme for this evening's lesson is rate of change. Now, rate of change is one of the applications of calculus. And it's one of those sections in mathematics that's really practically applicable to a lot of everyday situations. Now, what is rate of change? Well, rate of change is basically just the change of one quantity with respect to another. Now, usually, rate of change is the change of a quantity with respect to time. So usually when we do a rate of change question, on the x-axis we will have time. That could be time in minutes, it could be time in hours. And on the y-axis of our graph, that would be some other quantity. We could look at the rate of change of velocity against time, or the rate of change of volume against time, or mass against time. So generally speaking, um, most rate of change questions involve the change of a physical quantity with respect to time, but it needn't necessarily be time that we're looking at. Now, why is this, how does calculus come into this? Well, the rate of change is defined as the gradient of any graph. So the derivative, you will remember, f dash x, is a formula that describes the gradient. So therefore, if we find the derivative, and we substitute in the x value at a specific point, we will find the instantaneous could be velocity or rate of change on that particular point. It's very important though that you guys realize that we, um, to get instantaneous rate of change, we have to use the derivative and we can't just use um, the gradient of the graph. That would be an average value and we don't want to get into averages if they ask us for specific values. Right, now let's have a look quickly at it, the type of example that they can ask us. Really, it's very important to just read the question carefully and look at what they're asking you. What I've got here is an example where they say P stands for the mass of a bacteria at any given time. And P is defined by 500 plus 200T plus 15T squared. Now, you guys may, might, might notice that this is, a, um, this is a quadratic equation. It would have the shape of a parabola, so it would be possible to sketch it. But we're not going to get into that. Now, the first question to us might be, remember now, P stands for the mass of a bacteria. The first question might be, Calculate the mass of the bacteria after, let's say, two minutes. Now, in that case, what we will say to ourselves is, I've already got an equation that describes the mass at any given time, and the only thing that I need to do is I need to substitute 2 in the place of t, and that will give me the mass at any given time. Right, I'm not even going to work it out because I'm just trying to show you guys the concept. A next question might be, calculate the rate of change of the mass of the bacteria after two minutes. Now, the moment you see the word rate of change, you must know that we are now talking about the um, instantaneous, the gradient at a particular point. So the rate of change of mass against time is then going to be dp over dt. I am now going to find the derivative with respect to t of the function p and only then am I going to substitute the time in because they're not asking me for the mass anymore, they're asking me for the rate of change of mass. So finding derivative quite e easy then, constant value will fall away and dp dt will be given by 200 plus 30t. And now I can calculate the rate of change of mass after two minutes or whatever by just substituting two in the place of t. So very important first concept. Most rate of change questions will be with respect to time. And if we want the rate of change at a particular time, two minutes or three minutes or five seconds, we need to find the derivative and then substitute in the quantity or, or the amount that they gave us for time. Now, those of you that do science will be 
we'll, we'll know quite a bit more about rate of change with respect to our physical quantities such as distance, velocity and acceleration. Now usually the distance or the position or the displacement of a particle is given by the formula S of t. Then the velocity of a particle will be given by V of t and acceleration A of t. Right. Now these three are interlinked to each other because velocity is the rate of change of position with respect to time. In other words, if I have a position, distance or displacement equation that's an S, I can get the derivative of that equation and that will give me an equation that describes the velocity at any given point. Furthermore, if I then want to get to acceleration, I can get the second derivative of position or the first derivative of velocity and that is how they're interlinked. So let's just have a look. S of t is usually position, distance or displacement. V of t, speed or velocity. And A of t, acceleration. So to find the velocity, I need to know what does the distance, how does the distance change with respect to time. If there's a big change in distance in a small time, then obviously the, the object is moving fast. And also for acceleration, I need to know how does the velocity change with respect to time. All right, now let's have a look at a fairly easy practical example. Um, the question that I've got here is from the classroom math maths book. It says that the position of a particle is given by the formula s of t equal to 3t squared. And they will have to specify whether the time is in minutes or in seconds. And in this case, it is in seconds. So the position of an object is given by the formula s of t equal to 3t squared. Now the first question is calculate the distance in meters after two seconds. Then I say to myself, all right, I must just make sure that I have the correct equation in front of me. Do I have a distance or position equation? Yes, I do. So all I need to do is I simply need to replace the two, uh, the t with two, and three times two squared then gives me 12 meters. So I'm not doing rate of change yet, they just asked me for distance. Right, now the next question might be something like, calculate the velocity of the particle after, let's say, two seconds again. Calculate the velocity after two seconds. Now, I need to say to myself, wait a minute, I don't have an equation that describes the velocity, but... I do know that velocity is defined by the rate of change of distance or position with respect to time. So therefore, I may take the S of t equation, get the first derivative of that, and remember S of t was 3t squared, so the derivative will be 2 times 3, which is 6t. And now only can I calculate the velocity after two seconds? Remember, velocity is the rate of change of position or distance. Okay, so now, quite simply, I will substitute two in the place of t, and the velocity after two seconds is then 12 meters per second. Finally, they may ask us a question like, calculate the acceleration after two seconds. Then I say to myself again, I don't have an acceleration equation at this stage, but I do know that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So if I can find the derivative of the velocity equation, that will describe the acceleration. Now, if I find the derivative of v of t equal to 6t, I get that the acceleration with respect to time is 6 meters per second squared. Now this is quite interesting. Do you guys see that now 
there's nowhere for me to substitute. There's no t left in my equation. There's nowhere for me to substitute in two seconds or three seconds or four seconds or five seconds. Now, what this means is it means that the acceleration is constant. Um, doesn't matter if it's one second or two seconds or five seconds or six seconds, the acceleration remains constant at six meters per second squared. Um, that is because there's no space for me to put the t in, and that means that the, res the, the change of velocity with respect to time is a constant. Is this